St. Louis native found dead just 30 miles from her college campus. Good evening, everyone. I'm Claire Kellett. I'm Courtney Bryant. Tonight, family and friends are mourning the loss of Ali Costiel, a student at the University of Mississippi. The 21-year-old was found Saturday morning near a lake in northern Mississippi. News for Emma Hogue on the story for us tonight, and Emma, just awful. Claire Courtney, those who knew Allie say she was a ray of sunshine. Her dad took to Facebook posting this photo. He goes on to describe that moment police in Sunset Hills came knocking on his door. He learned his daughter, just 21 years old, would never come home. Very awesome girl. She was willing to help out anybody who needed help. A beautiful woman with a bright future. Tonight, the death of 21 year old Allie Costiel gripping hundreds from Mississippi to Missouri. Allie was just very fun and outgoing, very friendly girl, didn't have really any enemies in life. The bright and bubbly University of Mississippi student was found dead Saturday morning. Details are slim, but investigators suspect foul play. We were all family. I'm very sad what happened to Allie. She didn't deserve this. Claudia Swire says she first met Allie in second grade at Truman Elementary School. The two went on to be teammates on the track team at Lindbergh High School before graduating in 2016. I'm just going to miss how the fact that she was always there for me if I needed to talk to her. Swire says the two lost touch after high school, but Costiel's friends from college tell News 4 she was a ray of sunshine, genuine and selfless. Her dad took to Facebook posting this photo. He says she was attending summer school and teaching fitness classes at Ole Miss. The young woman destined for success was studying marketing and set to graduate next year. Who would do this to this poor girl? That question now haunting those that knew and loved Allie, a young woman robbed of a promising future and college diploma. She didn't deserve this. Just heartbreaking. And as you heard, Koshiel graduated from Lindbergh High School in 2016. Hours ago, the district sent us this statement saying our hearts are broken for the Costiels. It goes on to say they extend their deepest sympathies to Allie's family during this difficult time. Today, we also reached out to investigators in Mississippi. Still no update on where this investigation stands, but we'll be sure to keep you posted once we get any new information. In the studio, Emma Hogue News 4. Tonight, police are investigating after a woman was found shot to death in the Metro East. It's the third woman found murdered in the last two weeks in that same area. Amanda Laguerre was found just before five Sunday morning near Jefferson and Bellevue in East St. Louis. East St. Louis Police and Illinois State Police are investigating the case. News 4 will have more information on that investigation coming up on News 4 at 6. Over the past few weeks, News 4 has covered several homicide investigations involving young victims, some as young as two years old. The latest over the weekend, a 14-year-old in North St. Louis County Ian Coleman was found shot to death inside an apartment. Police say a group of teenagers was inside that apartment when a gun went off and struck Coleman. A juvenile has been identified as a person of interest, but he is not in custody. News 4 asked police how many homicides involving young people they have been investigating this year. In St. Louis City, police tell us so far this year there have been seven victims under the age of 17 compared to all of 2018 when there were six victims. St. Louis County has had three so far this year compared to six last year. Coming up tonight on News 4 at 6, we are asking what can be done to curb the violence. Today, people in Eureka woke up to flash flooding after torrential downpours overnight. News 4 spoke to one man who escaped from his flooded car after driving into high water. Pretty immediately, the water was filling up inside the car. So, you know, there was like water, you know, already up to like, you know, like to my like knees while I was getting out. So that was actually pretty scary. And but my car wouldn't let me roll the window down. So now you can see the water is actually coming in through the window. That was just one portion of a road turned into a lake by heavy rainfall near an area west of 109 south of I-44. In downtown Eureka, the water got about four feet deep. But Russell Kinsaw talked to businesses about the cleanup and how this flood compares to the last big flood Russell they had in 2017. Take a look now. It is hard to imagine when you look right now that Main Street was full of water this morning, but I want you to check this out. Right here is the watermark on the back of this sign. This is how deep it was at this point. Now, you may remember the flood of 2017. Main Street had 
five feet or more of water. The Coast Guard had these red boats going up and down. They also had built these sandbag flood walls in front of the businesses to protect them. This morning, they didn't have that kind of protection. The cleanup is taking all day, but the flood water was there and gone in a short time. It is a shocker. You wake up in the morning and uh, you think, oh my God, how could, how could this have happened? Inside Odell's on Main Street in Old Town Eureka, the water got about a foot deep. It was gone quickly, but did some lasting damage. The worst thing that, that we're going to have to deal with inside the building is uh, we're going to have to replace uh, our wooden floors and our banquet uh, side. The water rose to at least four feet deep in downtown Eureka. One nearby resident said they recorded seven inches of rain. The flooding came from nearby Flat Creek, which was back in its banks by 8 a.m. About 10 to 12 inches. We are cutting out drywall and working on pulling out wet insulation. At the Shelter Insurance Agency, they have a flood wall for the front door, but didn't get a chance to use it. The cleanup is going quickly across the street at Joe Bacardi's, thanks to all the help. I mean, at 7, 7.30, I had 20 people in here, so a lot of employees, but even just just locals coming in to help. Some of the help came from the Eureka High School football team. We got done with football today, and uh, our coach told us that they might need some help uh, down in downtown Eureka. Uh, I got home, and I got a call and texted some of my buddies, and we all came down here just to help. In the flood of 2015, downtown businesses had five feet of water inside them. But by 2017, the city was a lot better at battling flooding. A sandbag flood wall was built to protect most downtown businesses. So how does this flood compare to the last one in 2017? This one was actually worse than 17, but it was so quick. And I got here at 6.30 this morning, and by 8, 8.30, it was all down. People who have lived in Eureka over 30 years say they cannot remember a time whenever they had a flash flood this bad. But unfortunately, the businesses in the downtown area are getting a lot of experience at cleaning up after flooding. Joe Bacardi's and others say they may reopen as early as tomorrow. Live in Eureka, Russell Kinsall, News 4. In University City, some residents were forced from their apartments due to the flash flooding. Some told us they had to crawl from windows to get to safety. This was the Hafner Apartments north of Olive and right along the River De Pere. Cars and dumpsters floated nearly a football field length away. No one was hurt. And in the Metro East, cars stalled on flooded roads. This is a look at some of the stranded cars at the intersection of 20th and Park in Granite City this morning near the steel mill.